Hey guys, welcome to another video. It's about time. <laughs> okay, I don't know if I leave this in, but just the light came down. Welcome to another video. This week I want to speak about a few tips and tricks or thoughts more so about transcription, about transcribing solos. And this is more me kind of remembering what I have been told over the years and also me kind of sharing what I still kind of do wrong and how I want to improve my process of transcribing things. One of the most important things, and it's kind of the most obvious one, but I actually forgot that over time, is I feel transcribing something you actually really enjoy is a huge thing. Maybe this is an exclusive thing to the world of jazz and jazz colleges, but when, when I started, um, there was a clear divide from two kind of, two types of songs. There was like the very academic, very kind of the, the, the cool songs, like, you know, like transcribing 26-2 by Coltrane or, well, Giant Steps, Inner Urge, McCoy Tyner stuff like um, One Finger Snapper Herbie. All those really beefy transcriptions with a lot of difficult harmony at the time and technical dexterity was required. And also at the time, I wasn't really into this music yet. I might have preferred more a Chet Baker trumpet solo over There Will Be Another You, something along those lines. Um, but I felt always this pressure, I have to transcribe something that's really, really difficult and really, really hard to get into. And I feel this can inhibit you. Sometimes a transcription can feel like this huge mountain. And if you don't get your foot into the door with a little bit of success of like recognizing something or figuring something out, I feel it can be really discouraging and you might stop before you have even really started. While when you might be transcribing something that's a bit closer to what you really love listening to and you really enjoy, you might make faster progress because you actually can figure something out and it's an amazing feeling if you suddenly play something that Chet Baker just played on his trumpet. So I feel point number one, find something you're really excited about it because this excitement can, can work as your fuel to keep you going when the transcription gets longer and harder. The second point is be strategic in the pieces you choose as well. So what I mean by that is like ask yourself the question why I'm transcribing that. Is it like pure joy? Because I just really love this and I want to be able to play this. This is like one of the most childlike but also most positive things. I just really want to be able to play this. This is amazing and I think that's always a good thing to have. But you can always also ask yourself the question, maybe I'm transcribing this because I want to sound more like this. Like I certainly did that in college. Like I want to sound a bit more like Rosenwinkel does over standards, like the Intuit album was a huge one when I was in college so you transcribe specific songs from that record to get closer to that sound. It could be that you're learning a specific tune and you're learning inner urge and you're struggling maybe with the, the, the bottom section, the B section of it so go to a great performance of someone, maybe Joe Henderson in the original or from someone else playing over this tune and and really with a, with a, with a reason. Like I want to learn this tune, I want to learn this set of harmony how do I do it? I listen to someone and figure out what they did. Or it's a specific harmonic movement you want to learn more about and get more vocabulary. For example, the classic example was, I want to learn more about 2-5-1s, standard thing in jazz. So maybe I go to a tune like Tune Up, which is a bunch of 2-5-1s, and I listen to what Sonny Rollins plays over that, because now I have like the best sax player in the world giving me lots of options over this specific harmonic movement. So there's multiple reasons why we might transcribe something. And I think it's good if you go into a transcription to be aware, do I actually want the artist? Do I want to tune? Do I want a particular harmonic movement? Sometimes they all work together, but it's, it's good to be clear about why you're doing a certain thing. Now, the next part is two things that are often put against each other in sort of a conflict. And I don't think they have to be. But what often people say is like, on the one hand, you can transcribe a whole solo like from start to finish, or you only transcribe a chorus or maybe just a two, five, one or something like that. And some people say, oh, you have to do the whole thing because only this way you learn. Some people say, no, the whole thing, there's lots of information you might not need. Only do the things you really need for your own playing. And I think both of them are true. I think we had David Liebman in college once who gave a few master classes and a talk, and he said every young jazz musician should do, I think, four to six full 
transcriptions, like a solo from start to finish. Like, and we did it in our third year as well with like a minimum of like three to three and a half minutes. And I think in a certain part of your development, that's really good because you learn certain things you can't learn otherwise, mainly how a solo is built. What's the development, the arc of the soloist over multiple choruses? The classic example in jazz guitar would be Wes Montgomery over West Coast Blues, for example, like a couple of choruses of single note playing going into a couple of choruses of octaves going into the chordal thing. That would be kind of the blueprint for a lot of classic jazz guitar solos. And to learn that, it's really beneficial to do a whole solo. However, Liebman said as well, after he did those four to six full solos, he didn't really afterwards in his career spend overly much time on transcribing other full solos, maybe bits and bops. And I think there, the, the previous point of being specific comes in. I think if you did kind of your, your core work of a couple of solos that you really internalized, you can be more specific with like picking it because of a tune, picking one chorus, picking one harmonic movement to, to strengthen your vocabulary in a very specific point. However, I feel Liebman has a point. You learn certain things only if you do a solo from start to finish. And don't worry about the number. It doesn't have to be four. It doesn't have to be six. If you do one or two, that's cool too. Everybody learns different. And I feel it's just important to do it at least once. And now to something more on the technical side of how I actually transcribe things. And again, I got very good advice that I didn't really follow. My teachers always told me, don't use something like Transcribe or The Amazing Slowdowner to change the speed of the transcription. Because there is something to be said that it is a lot harder if you do it in the original speed. A lot, a lot harder. I can't stress that enough. However, you learn so much more. Your ear develops way better and quicker if you do it this way. And also, you probably have to listen to the same phrase a lot more often in the fast tempo than you would have in the slow tempo. So what I mean by this is the following. Listen to this. And now. Now I have a chance. You get the, you get the information presented more often and more of that can really sink in, into your ear, into your phrasing, into all the details you find. However, to be honest, I, I was never that good. I was pretty bad with my ears, I still am. I really struggled with it, so I slowed down pretty much all of my solos in college to get the notes, because I was desperate to, to know what notes are played over the changes. So I did it this way. I did it in a way kind of to, to skip the line in some ways. The problem is by skipping the line, you leave your ears behind. And that's something I have to work now even harder for. Because my ears, if you play a gig and you play with other people and your ears are not fast enough to pick things up on the spot, you notice that. And none of them will slow down for you in a real life situation. So uh, that's something I have to improve. Nowadays, I'm just working on a Joshua Radman transcription. I have a bit more years of experience and listen to this music. So the vocabulary is more familiar to me. And I try more and more to get more full speed stuff from a transcription. And with the solo I'm doing at the moment uh, from Joshua, there's a lot of blues phrasing and a lot of uh, simple phrasing in there, which I can pick up by now. But as soon as he goes into double time, I kind of have to slow it down again a little bit to, to really get all the notes and all the articulation. But that's something I'm working on actively. Now, the last thing is about the actual meat of it, how I do it, um, or what what is really helpful for me. Um, I use a program called Transcribe. There's lots of other programs. I'm not affiliated with that program. It's kind of amazing in the way it's structured. And I try to show you this on the screen where you see the tune as a waveform and you can put down markers. Um, what those markers do, I, I kind of put them down as in choruses, choruses one, two, three, four, five. And it really helps me. I'm a very, very visual person. And sometimes when I was in front of a long transcription, it can feel like there is no end to it. And it can feel really daunting and it's really disencouraging. And sometimes you stop because it's just overwhelming. However, I felt if I map it out beforehand into the different choruses, I just get a, I get a picture of the thing. And every time I did a chorus, you see, oh, I got this now and now I have this and now I have this. And it becomes a more attainable task at least for me. It, just the visual seeing alone for that, even if the program couldn't slow it down or change the pitch slightly, 
um even just the visualization is for me that's that's it that that helps me loads with this program in particular um then as the last point of how i transcribe it in the way there's a few things i'm doing for example i try to do with this joshua randman solo i did a chorus on one day however long that takes you i did this chorus then on the next day when i go back to it i make sure i repeat this chorus and do this and then add a little bit new to it and i keep adding little bits of new to it while always repeating the old stuff that's how i personally learn i know some people write all, everything down like just do kind of the notes and see where it is and then learn the solo for me that never worked i needed to get it in my ear and into my fingers step by step so this is kind of like the way i do i think with all of those little things those are all tips those are all just ideas to get you going don't be too hung up on any of them those are just like my ideas and they help me and i'm still like i'm doing this for a couple of years now and i'm still doing lots of things wrong and trying to make them better always trying to improve so i hope maybe some of those tips help you i hope you enjoyed this little talk about the the struggles of transcriptions and i hope i see you soon in another video cheers Thank you.